unsung house. Handmade shoes. Join me today in a total deep dive. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Dale of Dale's Leatherworks, and in today's video, I'm very excited to be covering one of the latest and hottest new brands, Unsung House. The Unsung guys have been on the Stitch Down podcast. They're really doing something amazing in their small workshop in Tennessee. Let's unbox them. So the box is super cool. Handmade shoes and repair house. So they come with these incredible hefty boot bags. They say, unsung U22-2 engineer boot for generous use in service of good. Thoughtfully made one pair at a time. Take care. And they include two bags, even though one is definitely sufficient for both boots. So these boots were sent to me by my buddy Mario of Boot Reaper. Go give him a follow on Instagram. I'll leave a link to his Instagram in the description below. And let's get a look at these bad boys. So these are some brilliant engineer boots. They posted these on Instagram. They said two made to measure custom builds sent out this week. We've got a 044 Wicket and Craig natural latigo over dyed with black walnut dye. The other was a Horwing color eight shell cordovan, super nice. And so I asked the guys at Unsung if there was anything special that they wanted me to mention in the review. And they said, other than the construction details, they are hand welt construction, baker leather footbeds. He'd like to clarify the dye and why it ends up so crazy and streaky. He said, it's mostly born out of trying to make a natural dye from walnuts in my backyard. Because this Wicket and Craig Latigo is pretty waxy, it doesn't take the dye super easily and yields this interesting wood grain sort of character. Not really what I intended when I started making that die, but it made for a cool result. So I've done a bunch of these over the last year or so. Absolutely amazing die work. I could tell these were hand dyed and the artistry in these is just brilliant. They have an amazing antiqued look all throughout the upper. I really like it. Yeah, really woodsy, warm look. Yeah, I could tell this is Wicket and Craig Latigo. It definitely feels like it. I sell medium weight insoles in this same exact material. It's usually pretty thick though. They used a, a bit of a thinner uh, leather on the upper here, thankfully, because the insoles I use are 10 ounces. You wouldn't really want a boot made out of that. So yeah, the uppers are five and a half ounces, which is exactly where you want to be for a boot. Most striking at first glance, I talk about the toe track on engineer boots, and this one has a pronounced toe track, really prominent toe track in there. Deliberately placed in there, exactly straight, a very, very striking toe track. Now this one doesn't go all the way up the entirety of the shaft. It actually just goes up the front of the vamp and ends at the top of this panel. Extremely stylish. I love it. So we've got a really nice almond shaped toe, unstructured, five layers of veg tan in the heel stack, a veg tan midsole that appears to be about a 15 ounce leather midsole, incredible. We've got a nice woodsman heel back here. The edge is stained a dark brown color. Most striking to me is this Dr. Sole original outsole. It's got what appears to be like a copper cording throughout. Um, let me know in the comments below. I've never seen a Dr. Sole outsole like this before. It is nuts looking. I absolutely love it. In fact, if I own these, I would almost feel guilty wearing these because the outsoles are just so nice. I wouldn't want to mess them up. Nine nails across the midfoot. That's amazing. Nine brass nails. It is 
270 degree Goodyear welted, hand welted. Amazing, really nice work. And I like the shape of the bottom of the sole. It doesn't appear to correspond to the last. The sole has this cool like angle right here. It's not completely rounded like the other side is. This side has a little bit of a box cut pattern, which is awesome. That appears to have been a deliberate feature stylistically because it's on both boots and they could have rounded that out, but they didn't. I think that's awesome. That looks really cool, especially looking down from the top down. It gives it like a months in last type of a look. The ankle strap is stitched in. Really cool, elegant stitch pattern there. We have an hourglass stitch right here. I assume that's stylistic. Actually, it's not just stylistic. I've never seen this before, but on the inside of the boot, it's got these two pull straps in there, which I assume will help you get in and out of it. That is awesome. I've never seen that before, but that hourglass stitch stitches these uh, cotton pull loops on the inside, which there's two of them. Also on the inside, unsung, made by hand, a stamp in there. It's got the size, they're unlined. Although the vamp is lined, I can feel that the vamp is lined in there. So unlined in the shaft. Then yeah, the shin straps are also stitched in with a U pattern stitch. We've got a roll top finished collar. The back heel stay is very elegant and stylish. It almost has like a cowboy boot type of a look to it in the way that it's cut and then it's stitched down in a very a very stylistic elegant stitch pattern. All their stitch patterns are very stylish. Almost inspired by cowboy boots, I would say. The back heel stay is triple stitched, pointed at the top of it. It's not just a rounded out basic back heel stay. It's actually sort of elevated peak in the center which then leads to the back heel stay and the back heel stay goes up and over the roll top collar and gets stitched in on the inside. So but it is not a it is not a pull tab. And then I could be wrong, but the roller buckles appear to be made by hand. They definitely appear to be handmade, similar to how Quan makes them. Yeah, these aren't your typical roller buckles. So if that is the case, I'll try to clarify. The straps are also, I believe, Wicket and Craig Latigo, though they are a little thicker. They're six and a quarter ounce thick. Just a gnarly pair of engineers, man. You could tell this is really, truly the pinnacle of handwork. These are not cheap, but they shouldn't be. If they're handmade and they're made in America, do not expect these to be cheap. I believe these are around $900, $800 possibly. So this is from the Unsung House website. Unsung specializes in the restoration, repair, and customization of quality footwear. We use the highest grade materials and approaches to ensure your shoes and boots will keep on going. Our discerning detail-oriented philosophy and passion for quality creates work that holds up and looks good doing it. So they do full sole and heel replacement. They do welting, cleaning and polishing, and they also build boots. So the man behind the brand is Grant and Isaac Gustafson in Nashville, Tennessee. So I do have friends, they also do relasting services and things like that. I have friends that have had boots relasted through Unsung and really, really love the, uh, the outcome of the services that they provide. And what else is cool is that these boots came with these Jaguar leather laces, genuine leather laces for boots and shoes, one pair. They're extremely thick rawhide leather laces in black. They obviously won't be of any use in these engineer boots, but they would definitely be of use in a wide eyelet uh, lace-up boot for sure. Bennett Stitchdown interviewed them, and he has an article. I'll also leave this in the link below. Actually, it wasn't Ben that did the interview. It was Josh Bornstein, December 2022. Unsung opens orders for their house-made engineer and slog boots. A laser focus on repairing and rebuilding high-end shoes and boots has made Grant and Isaac Gustafson's Nashville, Tennessee-based Unsung House an important cobbler scene player in a relatively short period of time. Their YouTube channel is a delight to scroll through and watch all kinds of different teardowns and restorations of ev everything from newish Vibers to vintage tanker boots. Unsung has opened their books for orders on two legitimately unique house-made models. 
all of which are customizable in a serious range of ways. So customers can order a pair of either the U22-2 Engineer starting at $1,500 or the U22-1 Slog Boot starting at $1,400. Their boots are built with the same quality of materials and attention to detail that they provide to all of their repairs and rebuilds, right down to the brass buckles on the Engineer crafted by Grant himself. Who called it? This guy called it. I could tell. <laughs> I could tell a handcrafted roller buckle when I see one. <laughs> Each boot is hand welted with JNFJ Baker leather insoles on your choice of last, either the classic anatomical Munson, the well rounded PBD, or the sprung toe Ludi. So I believe these engineers are built on the PBD last. Yeah, it, it appears so. The Ludi is a little bit wider, the PBD is a little bit more elegant, a little bit more almondy, whereas the Munson, well, we all know the Munson pretty clunky. Beyond choosing pattern and last, you can also customize things like welt type, sole configuration, thread color, and, and of course, upper leather. Unsung has Horween Olive Chrome Excel and English Tan Dublin on hand, Wicket and Craig Latigo, and they can help with sourcing other leathers as well. They've got some more amazing walnut dye available if you want that wicked bronzed look found on pairs like the ones below. Wow. And so thank you to Stitch Down for always uh, doing phenomenal work and meeting with these makers. I do plan to have the Unsung guys on for a boot talk here in the near future. I'm very excited for that. But what I can say in the meantime is, wow, these guys have hit the scene and they have been all the rage. I mean, a lot of my friends have gone through these guys and not only do they do absolutely phenomenal resoles and rebuilds and relasts, restoring, but they also are very hands-on guys. Obviously, as you can see by this walnut overdye, they are quite experimental with their processes as well. Very innovative. I love to see something like this where they actually take the natural latigo from Wicket and Craig and turn it into something like this, especially with a pigment that you can't get anywhere. I mean, they made this stuff themselves out of walnuts. <laughs> That's just crazy to me. All in all, I'm very impressed, both by their business model as well as their approach. Uh, I think the fact that they sort of started as cobblers and then said, hey, we can make boots by hand. Yeah, $1,400, $1,500 is exactly right, exactly correctly priced boots. Um, they're making these things by hand and that takes a lot of time. Probably takes them a week per pair of boots, similar to what Gabbard is doing at Creosote Boots. To any of you watching, if you're interested in these, my advice, get on the wait list sooner than later because uh, these guys, their wait lists start to stack up. Right now, Gabbard's is, backlog is about three years and so it's probably not gonna be long until these guys' backlog is going to be right up there alongside him. So <laughs> get on it while the getting's good. Anyways, with that, I'll shut it down. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm Dale of Dale's Leatherworks. End of transmission.